Hey guys, welcome to another video and today's an exciting one for me because I'm going to be reviewing the Ping G430. Now if you know me, you know that I like Ping drivers. They perform very well and they fit a certain market. They're very forgiving drivers. They go far enough to help people play better golf and hit the ball longer. So if you're a golfer who's got a Ping driver, maybe looking for an upgrade from the 425 or the 410, or maybe you've been using something like the TaylorMade but you're just dying for a little bit more forgiveness, well stay tuned and you'll find out if this is the driver for you. So guys, let's begin with the Ping G430. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it do? So when I look at this driver, one thing I will say, and it might be a little bit controversial to some, for me, the color combination looks a little bit sharper from what I've seen in pictures, but when I picked it up, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the look of the driver when I have it in hand the way that I've got it now. However, now what about me as a golfer? How am I going to be looking at it? I'm going to be looking down on this. And Ping do have a great way of making the drivers look bigger than they actually are. The, the Max driver comes in at 460cc on the limit. If you look at the LFT, that's 440cc, a little bit smaller and sometimes something that better players prefer. But the bigger head tends to lend itself to more MOI, meaning it's more forgiving when you don't find the middle of the golf club. I do like the detail of the color on the weight. I think it adds a little bit of class to the driver and just helps it stand out a little bit more. And one thing that Pinga have done on the Max, it's actually quite textured on the top of the driver. I'm not sure if this was necessary, but it does make it look pretty good, even though it's not carbon weave in the Max version. Again, in terms of hosel design, you can change the lie angle by up to three degrees, and you can change the loft by one degree or one and a half degree up and down. So Ping have stuck with the same fitting system that they've had for several years now. Now, having hit this driver, I will say it is refreshingly different to the G425. Now, I am testing the Asian model. This is going to have the Alta JCB, JB in the Japanese spec for the Alta J counterbalance shaft. For those of you in the West, that's going to mean this shaft is a little bit lighter and it kicks more. Really, the stiff in the Japanese spec is more like the regular in the European or Western spec. But there are plenty of options that come stock. But as you know, with Ping, if you want to buy a more upmarket shaft, you're going to have to pay an upcharge for that. And these Ping drivers are not cheap. From the top, you've also got some white and yellow decals on there. They look good. A little bit reminiscent of some of the tailor-made driver designs from the top. And on the LFT, you actually have it written Carbon Weaver. But of course, this is not in the G430 Max, so they haven't written that on there. All right, you're fed up with me talking. Let me hit this. So you might have noticed a little bit of a change. I haven't hit a ball yet, but I've just changed this into the Ping Tour the chrome shaft and this is the 75 gram stiff now they will do a black version of this they do a chrome version of this and then they do the standard version of this so you've got the ping alta japanese spec cb you've got the ping tour shaft and you've got the the chrome slash satin slash black one so the black one is going to be the lower launch in lower spinning this is going to be more of a mid launch mid spin if you're thinking something like a tensei this would be more like the tensei blue uh, if you go into the standard shaft, that's going to be more like your Tensei Red. And if you were going to use the black version, that'd be more like your Tensei White or your Tensei Orange. That just gives you some feel if you want kind of a cross-reference. But of course, I'd probably take a Tensei shaft over the stock Ping shaft. But if you do want to buy those, you are looking at paying around a 200 US dollar plus upcharge for those shafts too. So let's hit this ball. Let's see how it performs. Let's see how it feels. So behind the ball, of course, looks very much like a Ping driver. Turbulators little bit more of a sharper design. I actually like the back edge of this. It makes it quite easy to align that face. You can tell when it's not quite sat straight. But again, you might want the face a little bit open or closed, but I'm sure it'll help the alignment too. So let's give this one a go. Ah, now this was good. I hit that very high on the face, but I don't know how to say this. Spin consistency. I'm not very good with my S's as you can tell, but Consistency mixed by spin. And what they've done, if you look at the tailor-made, how they've got the twist face that uh, uh, reduces the amount of curve that you get off of toe or heel hit, Ping have done something similar to that with the top and the bottom of the golf club. So if you hit it high on the face, it should actually go a little bit further. And if you hit it low on the face, it should also counter that too and create a more consistent spin rate on off-center hits vertically. Hopefully I've said that correctly. Now, I absolutely hit that one awful. I went underneath the ball and the spin rate was 2,400. So maybe this was a great example of this technology actually working, but generally, if I went underneath a ball, I'd be expecting 3,500 backspin. So one thing I find with this driver, and I've hit it a few times already prior to the video, it's very forgiving. And in my mind, they've actually created a winning formula. I think there's more diversity between the two products. You've got the Max, which is very forgiving, 
and you've got the LST, which is designed with a carbon crown to be lower spinning. Now, if you look at last year, I think what they did through the range is they made everything a lot lower spinning, and that made the Max too much like the old version of the LST. So with the G410, I had a lot of players that performed really well with the G410, but just did not get on with the G425. And the reason for that was the spin rate was so much lower than the G410. What it feels like to me so far is the Max is more like the G410, but with added technology, better MOI, and moderate spin rate. This driver isn't for everybody. It's going to spin a lot for some golfers. And I will say it sounds better this year than the G425. I had a very hard time with the G425 when I could hear people hitting a shot and it sounded to me like they'd hit it from the heel, yet I'd look at the data and they've hit it out the middle of the face. So for me, this is sounding better. The face also appears shallower. It's not quite as deep as it was in previous years. Let me hit more shots, I'm talking too much. Not bad backspin, 2,200 medium ball speed on that one. It just feels good. Uh, it sounds better, it feels better. Now I did say if you challenged me to hit a fairway, I would just go with this driver over and over and over again. And before I hit the G425, I would bet that this one is better. I like this driver. Just out and out, I am gonna say, I'm gonna give a lot of fittings this year. This driver is going to be the right driver for a lot of golfers. It's got plenty of forgiveness. The club golfer is going to love this driver. It's very important you get the right shaft. It's very important you get the right loft. And if it isn't, maybe the LFT will come knocking. Maybe the SFT will come knocking. Okay, ping G430 LFT. What am I hoping for? Um, well, I'm hoping a lot. I'm hoping it, one, it's fade bias. I want it to be slightly more biased towards the right of the fairway because this gives more options to better players. Two. I'm hoping it sounds good. If we've got carbon on the crown, typically carbon drivers don't sound as good as titanium drivers, in my opinion. I think Titleist have made very good sounding drivers for a long time and they've stuck to that titanium model. The carbon drivers from Callaway and TaylorMade have got a little bit more of a unique, maybe muffled sound. The shaft has changed. I've put the same shaft in, so it's only a head comparison, also 10.5 degrees. And in an ideal world, I'm hoping the spin rate is maybe 400 RPMs lower. So let's have a look. Now there is a little bit more wording on the crown. It does say carbon weave, uh, but not at all distracting. And it's a 440 head, slightly smaller, but not really something that I'd be aware of. Now, before I do hit it, this carbon crown that separate, you can see the carbon crown. It actually looks a little bit like the original M1. It's like the tailor-made as they've got better at making carbon crowns. They've got that carbon closer to the face. This is about three quarters of an inch away from the face and it's very noticeable. I wonder when the G435, G440 comes out, how close, but I can almost guarantee that they're gonna keep squeezing that carbon closer to the face. And that's probably what the next generations of ping drivers will start to look like. Okay, a little bit off to the right. It does seem to have that flatter ball flight straight away. So the last one, 2000 backspin. Now, honestly, it's a little bit too low to be livable. I'm not gonna deny that that might give you some of the longest drives that you can hit. I quite often see people hit it very, very long on a 16 degree launch angle and 1,800 spin. However, on a bad day, that 1,800 spin might be a toe hit that drops to 900, 1,200. You start missing fairways and it's not a very good day for you. So 2,000, 1,800, it's gonna give you some really, really long drives, but there's gonna be some really wild drives in there too when you start spinning the ball so low. PGA Tour average around 2,250 for the spin rate. <laughs> but yet, yeah, ping, well done. It's actually still managed to spin at around 2,000 RPM. So even when I hit it wrong, when I didn't find the middle of the face, it still actually got a very manageable spin rate. That's something TaylorMade can never manage. You get a driver, you hit it off the toe on a TaylorMade, it's going left on you, very, very left. <laughs> So, so far, what do I find? I find the 440 a little bit nicer looking to me, just a little bit smaller head. On the face of it, when I'm hitting balls, I don't notice it's not quite as forgiving, but yet when I look at the shots, I can tell it isn't quite as forgiving as the 430 Mac. If I was playing a lot, I'd got the shaft fit to me, I'd probably go for the LFT. But if I was a weekend golfer, just looking for something where I can find in the middle of the fairway, I'd definitely be going for the 430 Mac. So for me, the LFT does seem to be a longer club, and that's just because it manages that spin rate a lot better for me.
Now, if I were really looking to my game, I'd probably prefer to play the max variant with a little bit of a better suited shaft for me, where I get a little bit more of a centered hit, and I enjoy the extra forgiveness that the 430 Max provides. And now I'm on to the part that many of you are going to ask. Is it worth upgrading if you've got the Ping G425? How does it perform? G425, very good driver, but it was a little bit more reluctant to recommend this driver than I was the G410 because I felt the forgiveness was lower on this driver. Or just the way it played. It seemed to play that little bit less spinny, a little bit less forgiving for that reason. So we've got the G425 Max. This one had a 26 gram adjustable weight. It was 25 gram adjustable weight on the Max for the 430. And I believe a 22 gram adjustable weight on the LST. But when we have a look at this driver and I've put it in the same shaft I've been testing all day today, Let's give it a go. But this one I expect it to be a little bit lower launch and a little bit lower spinning. Now straight away, the alignment on the G430 Max on the crown, I actually appreciate a lot more now that I've gone back to the G425. So for something as little as the crown, the G430 does look so much better. So the backspin on that was 1,900, very much on the low side. Whereas when I managed to hit a toe hit on the 430, I felt that it just had that little bit more forgiveness and stayed playable. That could cost me one ball per round with the toe hit on the 425. Now I'm not sure if you can feel this at home, but when it comes down to the 425, the sound is more dull. Maybe it's this indoor environment, but the sound of the 425, it isn't as good as the 430. If you wanted to make one upgrade alone just on the sound, you'd definitely go for the 430. Okay, I got a good one. It took me a while to hit this 4, 425 very well. Maybe this is just my performance. Sorry about that, guys. But the 425 for me, it just took a little bit longer to get this working. I don't get too excited by this driver. It's a good driver, but the G430 is just a very, very good driver. We'll start to look at the data in just a moment, but I got one more. So guys, next up in test, you were probably not expecting this, but this is a TSR2. Now I'll be very transparent with you. This is not completely a fair test. In this, I've got the 10th A blue. I've got a 65 gram stiff shaft. In the ping, I had a 75 gram stiff shaft, but it was also mid launch or mid spin. So if I had a student saying to me, I want a mid launch, mid spin shaft, I'd go for the ping tour. Uh, chrome slash satin shaft that I use today. And if somebody wanted to use the Titleist with a mid-launch mid-spin shaft, I'd be looking at something like the Tensei Blue as well. This is also 10 degree, the ping is 10.5 degree. So again, not completely true. But it is a high MOI driver and many people are going to be stuck between should I get the ping G430 Max, should I go for the TSR2 if I'm looking for a forgiving driver. Now the data I've seen, Titleist have made a slightly less forgiving driver in the TSR2 than the TSI2 and what they say is that the TSI2 had so much forgiveness that it actually was somewhat detrimental to the distance because it created higher backspin. But golf geeking aside this is a TSR2 some people are wanting to know what does it perform like side by side let's try the TSR2 and see how this performs. Now we're going back to a more classic looking driver. Now interestingly that last drive was really bad but I hit it so high on the face not quite a sky but high on the face. Now with the ping technology, the, the bit that I can't really say, spin, spin consistency, um, I did one like that and it was actually saved. So I actually feel that ping have got something about the way they've changed this bulge and roll on the face that actually produces better shots when you hit it high on the face. Now, I'm really sorry, I'm not doing credit to this Titleist driver because it's a fantastic driver. That was more like it. So driver test wasn't meant to end this way, but the TSR2 for me, it is a forgiving driver, but it's not the same kind of forgiveness you're getting from the Max. The G430 Max is just more forgiving when you hit it off the toe, when you hit it a little bit out the heel. But the TSR2 is a bit of an evolution on the TSI, and it's a little bit lower spin, a little bit less forgiveness. So it's quite interesting to look at the data this way, and I hope I haven't rattled the cage too much by introducing this TSR into the mix. So after all those shots, Let's start to look into this data. And there's no big surprises, but for me, I'm very, very happy. The G430 versus the G4 LST is doing what I really wanted as a fitter it to do. The backspin rate is around 400 RPMs less on the G430 LST. So that gives me a lot of options for golfers that are loving the G430 but spin it a little bit too much. The LST is that better driver for them. But with that, the LST did feel like it's a slightly smaller head. 
and it did feel like the MOI was less. If I hit it off the toe, I felt I got a little bit more turn on that. If I hit it a bit out the heel, I dropped on the ball speed. So the G430 felt to me like I could hit it almost anywhere on the face. I could get a very acceptable ball flight from that. In terms of raw distance, I gained around seven yards from the LFT and around four yards carry two. But now if we look into the G425, I really didn't rate that driver. When it came out a few years ago, I was a little bit on the fence. I felt it didn't perform as well as the G410. I still stand by that belief. The G410 for a lot of golfers was that forgiving club golfer's driver. The G425, however, was a little bit lower launch and a little bit lower spinning. It felt harder to play. Now the G430 for me takes the magic of the G410 and just updates it for 2022, 2023. From what you see, maybe my performance too, but the driver was around 10 yards shorter than the LST. So when we look at the G425 Max against the G430 Max, there's around five yard of difference in carry. The ball speed was similar, the launch angle was lower on the G425, and that's how it felt to me as well when I hit that in previous years. Now you can't ignore that data. Look at the TSR2, it's shining out that the ball speed's higher. However, pinch of salt on this one. If you look at that, it's a 10 degree head on the TSR2, but Titleist claim it's 10 degree. Ping claim it's 10.5 degree. There may be discrepancy in that. The ping may actually be 11 degree. The Titleist may actually be 9.5 degree. But when we look at those numbers, there is no way that the Titleist performance is so much better than the ping. If you finally tune that ping driver, I'm sure you're gonna get ball speed that replicates what the Titleist driver has just done. So take that extra ball speed as just some reflection on the loft of the golf club and the way that it performed in my hand. Now also, because it was launching a little bit lower on the tight list, we found that we got lower backspin. And because we got lower backspin, we got a little bit more carry and we actually got a little bit more distance. Or where I say a little bit, we got 17 yards more than G430 Max. However, I emphasize this one. The TSR2 is less forgiving than the TSI2. I've seen data to support this, but the TSR2, a little bit less forgiving, a little bit less backspin. It's resulting in more distance, but with that, you get lower MOI. So is the TSR2 all forgiving like it used to be in the TSI2? No. So what I would say is if we go back, the Ping G410, very forgiving driver, then it was followed by the TSI2, which took over the most forgiving driver for last year. And now we're following that with the Ping G430, which is going to be the most forgiving driver for this year. The TSR2 isn't a forgiving driver in the same light that the Ping is. The Ping knocks it out of the water in forgiveness. So if you do want a driver, you're looking for a driver that's going to work really well for you, do not overlook the Ping G430. It's one of the best drivers on the market right now. It's performing really well. And I am gonna say very early, this is probably gonna be my driver of the year for the club golfer. I think you're gonna find a lot of club golfers who need forgiveness but need speed off of the tee are gonna go into the Ping driver for this year. Now that doesn't mean that professionals won't use that. I think that a lot of good players will be using this too. But I think a lot of club golfers have got a lot to gain, especially from the G430. If you had to give it a rating, I'd give it an A+. I think this Ping driver is going to be fantastic. Is it going to be as long as the TaylorMade Stealth? probably not if you were under a little bit of pressure you need to find a fairway on the last hole i would take that ping driver every day now one thing i want you to do if you please like comment and subscribe you enjoyed the video it does take me a while to put these together but i enjoy doing it and also it gives me that little bit more knowledge that i've been spending time hitting this ball out there so when i fit for you guys out there i can relay the performance of the golf club to you guys too